Hello, hello. Hello. I'm Sally, here's Sophie. Hello. And today we're going to be cooking courgette and chili carbonara. This one serves one, and okay. we've got a um, large courgette in there. We've got um, one red chili. You can take the seeds out, or if you want it spicy, just leave the seeds in. We've taken them out today. Uh, we've got some single cream in there, some egg yolks, some uh, vegetarian. Well, if you want vegetarian hard cheese, then you can get it. I've just used normal Parmesan, freshly grated. And we've got some penne pasta just on the boil here. So it's 130 grams of penne. Again, you can use whatever pasta you want, but I thought this would be different because every time we do a carbonara, it's normally spaghetti, linguine, penne, so we'll do. Yeah, exactly. We'll do penne. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So, and um, quite quick to make. But very, very quick things. to make. So, um, I have, if, from my other video, <laughs> I like the presentation. Yeah. <laughs> I've taken the insides out of. And that's, am that's I, am the I, only reason that you've taken the insides out. Yeah, it, it doesn't affect the taste. It doesn't affect the taste. No. And what, that, what I was going to ask you is, does it affect the, I guess, not really, because you still the health side of it. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So courgettes are an absolutely amazing vegetable. They're so good for us. And um, I've actually just picked a perfect one yesterday. I oh, wow. Go over to um, show everybody. <laughs> oh. But um, so in the UK, courgettes are in season from June to October and they're quite an easy thing to grow um, and there's even um, a little house on our way to school in the village where I live where this couple have just literally dug some borders into their lawn and oh. they're just growing courgettes and kale and tomatoes and stuff out on the on their front garden um, so I mean they do take up quite a bit of space you know they they, roam. Yeah, they need yeah they need yeah they need so, a lot of space yeah you do need some room if you're going to grow your own but if you're just buying them in the shops you want to look for um kind of ones with glossy skins that don't have loads of blemishes on them and um you know dents and bruises yeah, okay. and they want to feel kind of quite heavy for their size that's a sign of a good healthy okay. project yeah oh wow and okay. yeah so they come from the curcubit family which is the same as squash and cucumbers and um i mean they're so versatile i'm sure you so I, know I, I i i think it's just i get through so many courgettes a week do you i love them so i have them in course, like make my own courgette and then yeah have that with like spaghetti bolognese or chili or anything like that I've got, like yeah you can grate them grill, you can grate them yeah like, i love it when you can just like do like really really big like slicing and then that's kind of like sometimes i find it a bit of a meat uh word something to go with oh, right. yeah. okay yeah yeah like a vegetarian it, option. like a vegetarian option yeah and if you if you kind of making them like really, really big, like diagonal mm -hmm. um, pieces. And then, I don't know, a bit of lean or something. I'm yeah. Like, oh, it's just Yeah, amazing. so you can put them on a skewer. Um, you can, like we said, we can grate them into yeah. salads. You can saute them, you can barbecue them. Um, you can roast them, well. you can put them in stir fries. Um, and these are absolutely packed with vitamin C, which is, incredibly good for your immune system it's also an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory so those are the things that are really good for anti-aging are good for diabetics because it helps reduce the risk of um, heart attack and heart disease and strokes which in diabetics is actually twice as high so you want to do whatever you can to bring that risk bring down, down if that's you and um, also, something that I talk about a lot and I have done in other videos is about um, blood deficiency, which is a Chinese medicine term, but it's, it's a bit like anemia, basically. And you might not show up as anemic, but if you've got a pale tongue that's got tooth marks around it, that means you're blood deficient. If your skin's a bit pale, if your nails are a bit pale, if you frequently feel tired, um, you might have quite light periods or no periods if you're really blood deficient and um, it's all because you know you haven't got enough iron going around your body mm -hmm. which helps to um, bring oxygen to the muscles and, and your yeah. system so um, 
the problem is, is that iron is not always very easily absorbable by the body, especially when it's taken in plant form. So vitamin C really helps the uptake of that. So that's why you want to have things like courgette that got lots of vitamin C in them, and then you'll have more iron and your blood will be more healthy. So there you go. Yeah. So we're just so, so saying these in um, just a tablespoon of olive oil, um, extra virgin just for the added bit of flavour. Mm -hmm. Just going to add a bit of salt in there. So we just want to make sure that they are nice and charred. So I've just turned up the heat for a minute, so I'll probably turn that back down. Mm -hmm. So we're doing that for about yeah, six, um, six to eight minutes, and then we'll go in with the chilli which I've just chopped um, for another minute. Not that finely, sort of quite big chunks. Quite big chunks, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, yeah, that looks, that looks Again, good. for like texture, you can do yeah, it. Yeah, and sort of presentation. Presentation, yeah. 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 And the, the, yeah, go on. Well, so courgettes have also got loads of potassium in them, which helps your muscles to keep working properly. And it's also quite high in folic acid, which is really important when you're trying to conceive. So another good reason mm. to get them down your yeah. pie hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and half a large courgette counts as one of your five a day. So that's about 80 grams of Wow. So that's, you have definitely put that much in that yeah. one, haven't you? Which is for one person. Yeah. yeah. Get rid of that. Okay, so you're just putting eggs, eggs in there. Yeah, um, so the thing with vitamin C is that it's a, an essential vitamin, which means the body can't make it itself. And it's also water soluble, meaning that you pee it out every day. So, you know, sometimes when you, um, if you take B vitamins, um, yeah. your pee goes bright, bright orange or yellow, um, that's B vitamins. Okay. And, um, and again, they, they are also water soluble. So this is why you've got to constantly replenish things. Um, so going back to the kind of um, blood deficiency side of things, it, people who are vegetarian or vegan are very prone to that because you get B vitamins and um, you know essential minerals and vitamins from, from meat quite often. So if you're only getting them from plants, you might want to think about supplementing because you're yeah. probably not going to be getting enough that you need. That's really good. Yeah. That. Yeah. I mean, it's actually, the thing is with, with our health is, you know that saying, you are what you eat. It's actually, you are what you digest. Yeah. And what you can absorb. What because you, absorb. you could be eating the, the healthiest diet in the world. Yeah. But if your body actually can't assimilate any of it or, you know, you've got a problem with your digestive health and everything's rushing through you too quickly or it's or you're blocked up and so you're actually reabsorbing waste back into your system, then you're not going to be that healthy even if you do okay. eat vegetables all the time. And I think that's why sometimes I work with people who say, I can't really understand it because I don't eat processed food and I don't eat rubbish i eat really healthily and i cook from fresh yeah but they've still got health problems um, because and that's probably why um the that yeah but also don't forget that you know like we keep saying about buying stuff that has been picked in you know grown in israel or south america or something it's sometimes you can eat an apple say that may have been picked four months earlier or longer yeah. and sat in a kind of storeroom and then the arrived in your fruit bowl eventually yeah. and it's got hardly any of the vitamins in it or yeah. that they've not even had a chance to develop yet because yeah. it wasn't allowed to ripen on the tree so it's not natural and then it's, it's being natural. flown thousands yeah. of miles and then it's by the it's time it's rich. reached you no it's not um i mean i We've all probably experienced eating fruit and vegetables that actually just don't taste of anything. And yeah. um, I, the thing I really can't stand is tomatoes when they're, sometimes you get them and they kind of, 
it's almost like they go bad from the inside out. Like yeah, you can see like that their skin looks a bit really weird. Around. Yeah, but they've also probably, you know, I grow tomatoes every summer in my greenhouse and they're so flavoursome and you're picking them directly off the plants. Um, yeah. And, and it's so different to the ones that you get in the shop sometimes, which just goes to show that, you know, they've That's lost great. all their... Goodness. goodness yeah right so now what's that so now we're just going to make the carbonara sauce so we've got uh, two egg yolks in there and then we're just going to add two tablespoons of single cream you can use creme fraiche if you like what about are there any um veggie alternatives for cream what sort of thing the coconut companies do they do anything oh. i never buy cream i don't know why i just it's not stuff no, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know i know i know what you mean it's um, a great thing for sprucing up a recipe yeah isn't it? and i just think you know just a, a couple of tablespoons yeah and, you know just you, normal single cream yeah i just don't think you can go wrong with it yeah um, i think there are um, there would be a, there are vegan options yeah. for people who are dairy free yeah and absolutely have an issue with dairy. I do need to do some more uh, research into um, <laughs> different different yeah diets and yeah. So, so we'll just give that a bit of a whisk. You can even eat courgette flowers. Did you I know? Oh my god, I love the courgette flowers. So do you have to do anything to them or just eat them? Um, well, I've only ever had them the deep fried oh, right. courgette flowers. Yeah, in tempura. Yeah, in tempura oh, butter. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, yeah. I've never cooked. I've never cooked them. Oh. In fact, my courgettes didn't work this year, did they? No. Yeah. yeah so uh, we'll be we'll be going again <laughs> next year. But yeah. I had that like, the flowers, and I forgot to like pick them and give them the go. But I find that I love like when when I go somewhere and I see them on the menu. Um, yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah. Next summer. Yeah. Next summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! But I'm just checking um, that we add the. Cheese, yeah. So, so some Parmesan cheese in there too. And in Australia and North America, they call courgettes zucchini. Of course. If you ever get confused by what is a zucchini, what is a zucchini? Or yeah, it's a courgette. Yeah, they're the same thing. Yeah. So give that a little bit of a mix. So the so courgette so and the chili is ready. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> this does look really, really good. Yeah. Um, just a few more minutes on the pasta and then we need to save a little bit of pasta water for this so it's going to make your sauce up a little bit more okay and then that's it really we just toss everything together so we'll just um it's very simple that's well, what yeah, i like about it exactly. it's not very many so we're going to add any more salt to this because we've got the parmesan cheese which is a nice bit of pepper yeah in there and again just a really quick easy yeah meal it could it could even be a lunch, you know. Yeah, especially if you've got someone coming over for lunch. Yeah, and, then and actually, I was thinking back, there was a point in the summer when um, everybody's called jet plants went absolutely nuts. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know, like the pictures on social marrows, media. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it, it literally um, takes a day, doesn't it, for them to pretty yeah. much turn, a day or two. Yeah, and, and then my so mum just this was complaining be... the whole time about, I was too late again for, I should have picked them this morning. Um, <laughs> But the thing is, if you wanted to have a bunch of people over and make something easy, but yeah, to feed a lot, but feed a lot and get through them, this would be yeah, an ideal type of thing, wouldn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. You just, well, I'll put it for you know, serve one, and then you just double, triple, probably yeah. for the recipe, whatever you want to do. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think this is going to be a nice mm. one. But yeah, I would normally with my um, any carbonara, I would normally use uh, creme fraiche. Right. Um, but yeah, I thought I would. What's the difference this. between? Um, I like the the, the consistency and the, the thickness of a of creme fraiche. Yeah, I love the flavour of creme fraiche anyway. Um, and yeah, so I'd normally just whack like a good half a tub of mm -hmm. that in. Well, we're, we're talking if we're, if we're doing like a big portion, mm -hmm. and then two or three egg yolks. Again, this similar sort of thing: parmesan cheese, yeah, some pepper. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do, I do really like them fresh. Yeah. And a, a little bit of a healthier alternative. Yeah. I make my pe peppercorn sauce now with them fresh. Right. My must try mussels instead of using cream. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So the, creme fresh has got a bit less fat in it. Yeah. Is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, not Tommy sauce. Um, what's his marinara? Oh yeah. So, that's not something I've yeah. ever made. <laughs> I've, eaten, I've eaten them when I'm at the coast and stuff. I think regarding fish, I mostly I just eat salmon or. Yeah. I mean, I do. This is this is just um, because obviously this is the time of year for mussels now. So anything with an R in is right. the time for mussels. Okay, any month. Any month. Oh right. Anything with an R in it. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, any month. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Well, I mean, the thing is that we live in um, the Midlands, so we are literally in the most landlocked part of the country. Yeah. And I think that's why I, fish doesn't kind of crop into Quite my really. mind too much because I'm thinking, oh, I don't know where I'd get really fresh. It probably comes. Do you think. Do you buy fresh fish? or? Um, yes and no. Um, well, yeah, I do have a supplier actually. Um, I'm going to show you this. I'm just going to pop some water in there. Is that about a mug full, would you say? Uh, mm. Probably. No, I think a mug's about 250 mils, isn't it? So, that, yeah, that yeah. was a cup. So, yeah. and you already had some stuff in it. So, um, yeah, otherwise, I go to the market on a Thursday and I will um, go and get my fresh fish on that. Yeah. That's, so, where I, that's where I get my muscles from, and they are always amazing. Wow. Right, so that's that done. So, so basically, do the kids like muscles? No, no, no. See, I think this is the other thing for me because I'm um, basically a single parent. Like, if I'm just cooking stuff for myself, I'm highly unlikely to go to the effort of making muscles and yeah exactly and I know and, stuff. and it is nice um, just to have them when you when you're out and about yes but I have what I've loved and I hope anybody watching has liked too is that I've I've made all the things again that we've already cooked and they're so easy and so tasty and I've just absolutely loved yeah, them so, so far. I'm already on my second batch of stuff and um Amazing. you know it's just perfect to make it up put it in portion yeah. in the freezer and then it's good to go and um yeah that's awesome i don't think i need to um okay so if the sauce looks a bit thick stir in more of the pasta water oh no but it doesn't look too thick so that's no. fine <laughs> if you've added too much water then put back on the lowest heat for a minute yeah. so i think you could actually not put as much because We've got quite a lot of sauce there. Yeah. So you want yeah, you to just it a bit. kind of covered. So mm -hmm. I'll just adapt the recipe. <laughs> That's fine. So I'll just pop that on the. Well, you can always like, you can just like serve it, it in with there. um just serve it with a slotted spoon so that. The yeah. Oh yeah. So the sort of, yeah exactly yeah. yeah. I'm just going to serve it like that anyway. So let's get that out. I love these giants. Yeah. Yeah. I, see, but that, yeah, my, my drawers, that, <laughs> when we moved into this house, it was one thing that I 100% wanted. Yeah. Good idea. Because the last house we lived in was nothing to do with me. So when we moved into this one, it was no longer going to be a bachelor pad or just things that men just want to eat. Yeah. Like, no, everything <laughs> needs to be fully organised. Well, especially because you love cooking. So yeah, exactly. So it's you don't want something that's dysfunctional, do you? No. Right, so we'll serve this up. Oh, that's really good. And then we can just add a little bit of the sauce on yeah. top. That is quite a big portion for one person. Yeah. Was that the recommended amount? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it? it's normally about 100 grams, isn't it, per person? Mm -hmm. This recipe said uh, 160, but... I thought we could do that because then you can take some and I can keep some. So, yeah. But yeah, so well, if, I, I mean, if you didn't have a fresh chilli, would you just sprinkle a few chilli flakes? Yeah, you could sprinkle a few chilli flakes over. Yeah. Yeah, you're still going to get the taste from that. Yeah. I do love the fresh chilli, but um, I'm going to get through many chilli flakes. Mm. So let me just wow, um, pour a little bit of. Some sauce over there. That might send somebody into a bit of a carb coma. <laughs> yeah. Might do. You can use, you can use them. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I would have this as a meal in the evening. But um, you could use wholemeal pasta as well. Um, just whatever you like. So that is the um, courgette and chilli carbonara. Oh,
Yeah, have a quick taste. Have a quick taste. Let's get a swallow count. Thank you. Okay. I'll go this side, you go this side. <laughs> Mm. Oh wow. Mm. Mm. Oh, right. You know what's so nice about that is the like the chewiness of the pasta and then the crunchiness, slight crunch of the courgette. The courgette. And the different and texture. The and the all I'd say is hundred percent you don't need as much water as that. Mm. Um yeah, that will like take a lot of cheese mm -hmm. right away from it as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll just adapt it. But oh my goodness, then just yeah, three flavors together. Very nice. Another one, super quick. That was what ten minutes. If you yeah, get the pasta on. I've got the pasta on. That's going to take yeah. the longest part. So Perfect. thanks, Sophie. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. welcome.